Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. I want to look into horror films that are so scary that you maybe shouldn't watch them alone. Now, as an adult, I think we can all agree that most of us can watch horror films on our own, especially or even the scariest horror films that we've ever seen. But sometimes, from time to time, you will watch a horror film alone that you're watching it thinking maybe I should turn this off and wait for my wife to come in and we can watch it together. Or you go and brush your teeth after the film and then you go up the stairs and you feel like there's something following you after you've watched this specific horror film. Those are the horror films I want to discuss today, just kind of loosely, um, and talk about 10 horror films that maybe you shouldn't watch alone. Hereditary is a horror film that I did watch alone, and in fact, most of the films on this list I did watch alone, and maybe I shouldn't have, or maybe you shouldn't watch these horror films alone, but Hereditary itself is one I did watch myself, and there were times in the film where I'm like, oh my god, like I can actually feel a presence coming towards me because of this film. There was certain scenes in this movie, it just kind of blew me away when nothing was happening. Like the scene where the boy was lying in his bed and his sister who died with getting her head chopped off, decapitated in a car, and she's standing in the corner of the room and I literally got goosebumps. Nothing was happening, but I got goosebumps and then her head fell off and it turned into a bowling ball. Scenes like that in horror films, like Hereditary, it just scared the life out of me, even though nothing is happening. The story might not be scary. The overall aspect of the whole entire scene might not be scary, but there's just certain things that happen in movies like Hereditary that I go, I don't want to watch this alone, and this is one of them. The Conjuring from 2013 is up next. Now, this is more mainstream. It is a mainstream horror film, so I think a lot of people will just disregard films like The Conjuring because it is mainstream. But this is probably the scariest mainstream film that I think I've seen in a long time. And even from that beginning, the opening credits, when The Conjuring title comes up and the, the score comes up with it, that is scary itself. I remember when my wife and kids went away on a holiday weekend to a caravan. I couldn't go because I was working and I decided to watch The Conjuring again. I did see it in the cinema. I was scared in the cinema, but I was with hundreds of people. But I thought, never, not seen it since the cinema. Let's whack this movie on. And then when this, those opening credits came up, I was immediately scared, not like physically shaking or anything like that because I'm an adult, but I was watching it with unease because I'm like, should I really be watching this myself again? Because I remember it being scary and watching it myself just gave it a, a bigger creep factor and I was like, oh, I just feel like I shouldn't be watching this alone. Sinister from 2012 is quite similar to Hereditary where the overall story is not that scary and the overall film is not that scary either. But I think there's some scenes in the movie that are quite haunting, especially scenes when he's watching those old 8mm films with the people hanging and then you see this, the ghoul character coming in and out. Those scenes are quite freaky and watching it alone adds another layer to that creepiness that some people will enjoy. And I think I do enjoy those to an extent where I'm creeped out because the films are intended to do that to you. But I think sometimes if you want to watch these films with two different perspectives is watch it, especially Sinister, watch it with people and then watch it without people. I think it's important to watch a film like Sinister with people first so that you know how scary it could be. And then when you're watching it alone, you know what scenes are scary. So you're preparing yourself and you're hyping yourself up to a point where you're like, I know this scene's going to be scary and I shouldn't be watching it alone. Next up, we've got The Descent from 2005, probably the least scariest movie on the list. And it is a film that I can watch alone, but there are people who are very claustrophobic. I'm semi-claustrophobic. I don't want to be buried alive, etc. So I've got a bit of claustrophobia in me. So when I watch a film like The Descent, it's not a scary film. The monsters are not scary, but the scenario itself is what makes this film scary. So when you're watching a film like The Descent, I feel like maybe not me specifically or you specifically or whatever, but do you ever get a feeling where you're watching a very uncomfortable scene in a horror film and you just want to talk to somebody about it or you want to be with someone? I feel like a film like The Descent when they're, it's claustrophobic and they're stuck in the tunnels and they get like rammed or crammed in this little small space. I feel like even though I'm in, my, I'm in a safe space, I want to turn around and look at someone and say to them, that is 
claustrophobic. But the fact that someone's not there for me to tell that to, I feel like I'm stuck in a bubble with the characters. So that's the reason why this is on the list. Next, we've got Paranormal Activity from 2007. This is quite scary. And again, it's not a mainstream film because it was an independent movie. It became mainstream because of how popular the movie became. The more popular a film becomes, the less people want to like it because they don't feel like they're um, unique enough. But Paranormal Activity is a film that I can honestly say still scares me today. Now, some of the sequels are also quite scary. But I feel like that first experience you have with the first movie in a franchise is what makes it for you. And that's what Paranormal Activity does. I remember being in the cinema watching this movie in 2009 and people were going to the toilet and when they were walking past you in the cinema, you literally jumped. You're like, oh my God, because you were on the edge of your seat for the whole movie. Not much happens in the film and I think that's what makes it really good because you're waiting for that something to happen, similar to the Blair Witch Project when nothing happens, but you're waiting for something to happen and you just jump when maybe you shouldn't jump or you don't think you should jump, but you do anyway, but it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Obviously, it's, in, it's based in a house as well. So if you're watching this movie yourself and you're in a house yourself, I had the unfortunate experience of putting headphones on while watching this movie in the dark, in the house myself. And it was an amazing experience as a horror fan. Maybe I shouldn't have done that though because I was scared the whole way through the film as an adult. The Autopsy of Jane Doe from 2016. Now this was an experience because again, I watched this movie myself in the dark. My wife was away out again with the kids. And I decided to stick this on. Now, this was a Patreon request that I got a few years ago. I'd never heard of the film at all. And I went into this movie blind, not knowing anything about it. I turned it on and I thought, okay, it's got Emil Hirsch in it. It's got Brian Cox in it. Good cast. Let's see what this is about. And as the movie progresses, it gets darker and darker to the point where I thought to myself, I've made, I've made a grave mistake here. I need my wife with me because this movie is haunting. It's The story is scary itself, but some of the scenarios that this father and son get themselves in are scary. Some of the foreshadowing in the film is scary as well. When you see the little bell on their toes and they, and they ring the bell to say, oh, that's just to say that they could still be alive. Ha 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 ha. And I'm like, oh no, now I'm waiting for the sound of a bell. And lo and behold, we get the sound of a bell at the end of a dark hallway and those scenes are haunting. And I'm like, oh, I just want to speak to my wife about this because it's scary. The Strangers from 2008 is a classic one because it's set in a cabin that's isolated in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And there's no help unless you've got a mobile phone that eventually won't work in a horror film. And it's about a couple who are terrorized by masked killers eventually. So that scenario itself is something that maybe you shouldn't watch yourself, but also maybe you shouldn't watch it as a couple because if the two of you are watching a film about a couple being killed or stalked and killed, you might look at each other and go, maybe we should watch this as a group. So not only should you not watch The Strangers alone, don't watch it as a couple. Don't watch it in a log cabin in the Cairngorms in the middle of Scotland in the snow where nothing's happening and nothing's going on around you because you may just die and I think that's what The Strangers does so I think The Strangers is a unique one on the list because it's a film that maybe you shouldn't watch alone but it's also a film that maybe you shouldn't watch as a couple save it for a group watch. The Others from 2001 was a unique experience for me because I watched this not too long after The Sixth Sense. Now The Sixth Sense was spoiled for me when I was younger so the twist, I won't mention it if you haven't seen it, um, but the twist was spoiled for me. So as I was watching the movie, I expected to see what happened at the end and it did. But then I went and watched the others just a, probably a few weeks later because I didn't see The Sixth Sense in the cinema. But then the others came out in 2001 and I had a plot twist in it that I didn't see coming straight after watching The Sixth Sense. So that blew me away. But I think The Others is a film that you shouldn't watch alone because it's set in this isolated area that a lot of the films on this list are. And it's just got that eerie feel to it about ghosts. Is there ghosts there? Is there not ghosts there? You've got the, the fog on the outside of the house. Everything about it is so eerie. And if you're looking out your window and you see the fog coming in, you're like, oh, it's, it is quite chilling at times. The unique thing about the others is, this in the UK, 
It's a 12 in the UK, rated 12. So for you guys, it's probably a, a PG-13 in the US. It's not a scary, scary film, but it's got scary elements to it. And there's just something about it that, how do you say it there, kind of Victorian-style mansions, I've got those kind of houses around me, not directly around me. I have to maybe walk about five minutes. But looking at those houses reminds me of films like The Others. So when I come back to The Others in the house, watch it myself, I just know that there's houses around me that could potentially be scary haunted. Next up, we've got Evil Dead from 2013. And it's quite similar to The Strangers, only to an extreme because The Strangers is something that can happen and did happen. Whereas Evil Dead is something that can't happen, uh, hopefully it can't happen, but it's still got that same scenario where you're isolated in a cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And the Evil Dead did things to me that I didn't know it could. I watched it in the cinema with my wife, so we were surrounded by people in a safe environment. My wife actually felt sick halfway through the movie, and it was because of the movie that made her feel sick. She was enjoying the film, she thought the film was good, but it just made her feel physically sick, and it hasn't happened to her before. She's not a big fan of horror films, but she can withstand a lot that happens in horror films. And I distinctly remember my teeth getting sore while I was watching the movie. I didn't have toothache, but I just felt like my teeth were getting really sore for some reason. And it always took me back to watching Evil Dead from 2013. Now, this is a remake, of course, or a semi-reboot remake. The Evil Dead franchise doesn't do anything like that to me. It doesn't make me want to watch a film as a group or with someone. I can watch those films alone. But when it comes to the remake, there's just something about it that's darker. And even though it's fake, it feels really realistic. Last on the list is An American Werewolf in London from 1981. Now, this list isn't in order. This isn't the, the scariest one you shouldn't watch alone, etc. They're not in any particular order. However... An American Werewolf in London is one of my scariest horror films of all time. If you watch the channel for a certain amount of time, you will know that werewolves are the creature, the mythical creature, that scare me the most. So when I watch a horror movie that has werewolves in it, I'm bound to be scared at some point, whether I watch it as a kid, a teenager, or an adult. There's something about the elements of a werewolf that always scare me because of my past dreams that I used to have that I won't go over again. And just having a werewolf in the film is scary. An American Werewolf in London, though, there's some scenes in that film that will haunt me forever. The underground scene, for example, the Moors scene at the beginning of the movie, those two scenes in particular will haunt me forever. And I haven't watched An American Werewolf in London alone, ever. And I don't think I will because of the subject matter, the werewolf. Again, werewolves are myth mythical creatures. But there's just something about it that I just can't watch it myself. Maybe it's, there's an element of knowing people who haven't seen the movie and I want to see their reaction in watching the film. So maybe I haven't had the opportunity to watch the movie myself, but I have. I've got it on 4K. I've got it on Blu-ray. I've got it on DVD. There's no excuse for me not to watch it myself. But for some reason, I just can't put myself to, down to watch it myself. Why is that? I just don't know. So that is 10 movies so scary that you shouldn't watch them alone, guys. And like I said, they're in no particular order. However, can you watch these movies yourself? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It maybe just depends on the type of person that you are. But are there any other horror films that are not on this list, guys, that you think that are so scary you shouldn't watch alone? Leave that list down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. I'll be right To get you, Barbara. Ever play in the cat? Ah! Ah! I want